This is my lovely old case. It is a CK530, so a Construction King 530. Uh, I believe that gave it a heavier front end. 50% sure, but it's really close there. Now, I guess these things came with not one, not two, but at least three different loader options. It looks like the most common one is called the Model 31. You would have it on this tag right here. On mine, um, it is just barely legible. And then it also has the modern Model 31 Ho. And that one is legible. The 31 Ho is pretty common and it's huge for this tractor. Hence, stacking that much weight on the front. The Model 31 loader, apparently, is a rare bird. The 32 loader was pretty common, and the 42 loader was pretty common. I don't entirely know all the differences between them. Um, this is what I've managed to break down, is that if you have the external rods on your pistons, and you do not have the bucket leveling, and you have two pistons, not one, then you've got a Model 31. Best I can tell. Uh, I, I think all the Model 32s had a single piston right there in the center. And I think the Model 42s all came with that bucket leveling system. So, but don't quote me on it. I, I ain't going to the mat on that. And it has blown some seals. Now, the, if I had a 31 or a 42, I can literally buy the seals from Amazon. No joke, no exaggeration. Amazon.com had them. But if you got a 31, they got to be custom made from fairy floss somewhere and uh, pieced together. So when we had to rebuild these cylinders, we took everything out, and we brought it to a hydraulic shop, and they did their darndest to match it up. And... Uh, it has failed completely. They just piss oil. Um, not a not little bit. And my definition of a little bit with this tractor is quite broad. Not a little bit, a, a whole lot. And what I've got are new pistons coming. And they should fit fine. Um, and I'm just swapping out completely new modern pistons so you know, it's unlikely I'll ever need to rebuild them, but if I ever need to rebuild them or replace them, at least, by gosh, I can find the parts as opposed to these. If you got the 32 or the 42, this doesn't apply to you. So I got that coming. Now, I thought, if you watch the channel, you'll know that our, our dump truck recently swallowed a lifter. So uh, it's out of the picture for a little while, and I still need to move a bunch of dirt, which means it's got to be this, because moving dirt with a track hoe, taking a scoop and driving around, it's just, a, it's just a not a winning proposition. So I need this thing going. So those pistons are on their way, and uh, the retrofit should be super easy. But I already know that the bottom mounts of these are just brutalized. So we've got, we've got levels of slop that are simply unacceptable. Now the reason that happened is because at some point somebody replaced the pins. And when they replaced the pins, they did not replace them with pins that lock themselves to the bucket. If they lock themselves to the bucket, then they pivot in the arms with the hardened bushings. Because they're not locked to the bucket, it's pivoting in the bucket ears. The bucket ears are a much narrower bit of steel it's not a greased bit of steel and it's not a hardened bit of steel. So they have completely wallered them bad boys right out. So my hope is um, that I can drop this bucket up by the well pump where I can get the welder to it and weld it up. Basically replace the insides so that when these new pistons arrive they're not pushing with all of their renewed strength on these badly damaged bucket ears. They are um, in some solid meat. So that's what we're off to do. I hope. So 
here's the bucket down. So far what I've done is I've knocked out these hardened steel bushings out of these ends and I'm going to replace them. They're worn pretty thin and you can get um, those sort of spring clip hardened bushings to just drive back in there. And I'll, I'll show you what those look like when they come in and I'll tell you where I got them. But that'll help with the slop right there. The downside is I don't really know what I can do with the slop down here. So that already appears to have part No, it doesn't. It doesn't appear to be a hardened bushing right there. It just appears to be rolled pretty bad. So I could order two more of those spring clip bushings, but as you can see, they wouldn't really stay in there. Unfortunately, nothing I've got for pipe kicking around here is going to work. This one must be a factory. It's got a solid... But no, it doesn't. It has got a piece of pipe hammered in there. You can see the hacksaw marks. And those would not be on a hardened steel bushing. So it's got a piece of pipe in it. I don't know if I can get it out or not. Obviously what I'm trying to do is Tighten up the pins. To be honest, that's probably good enough for right there. At least it's a greased point. It's this that's a problem. Huh. Some more head scratching. This is the homemade bushing out of here. It's a piece of pipe somebody's put it on a lathe and tapered it down in right through here I suspect so they can get oil or grease to the fitting and I'm going to replace it with two of the hardened bushings on either side so it becomes superfluous what well, turns out that this the big side is the perfect size to go in right there and repair that worn out part of bucket and this is almost the right size to be driven in there both these holes are out of round but I'll put an alignment pin through them line them up before I weld them I just need to find a way to make that slightly smaller so I've gone ahead and set up the farmer's lathe the farmer's lathe consists of a grinder clamped in the bandsaw with a dish of water for when it gets too hot. Let's go see how it fits. All right, both both bushings are in place. I just flipped it around, drove it in and cut it off. So now we will weld them and then grind them flush again. It ain't gonna be perfect, but it is gonna be so much better. And more than that one's still pretty bad, but that's all the time we have. And more than good enough for this machine. And here we are done. Got the pins through. Now, if, if you don't capture your pins, you'll just be here doing this exact same thing again in <laughs> 30 more years or whatnot. Um, because it needs to pivot. It needs to pivot on the piston. This is where the grease is, not out here. Uh, it needs to pivot out there. So the only way to do that is to capture the pin so that it pivots with the bucket. That way this 
never rotates in relation to that. They have to be loose. See how I've got them loose there? I just welded a piece of chain on. And uh, that allows them to move in and out. If you do it tight, either it'll break these bolts off or it'll, it'll break your tabs off. So, especially when they're this worn. But even if it was brand new, it's, it's got to have slop in it. It's got to. Now over here, this bolt hole was completely stripped out. So I welded a nut on. Got the exact same thing. Um, you know, part of me wishes that the pins were universal. They're not going to be because I had to hold this one out higher than I held that one. But beggars can't be choosers, and this is so much better than it was. So much better. What I was concerned with is that the slop in the bucket with the new pistons would allow them to rotate far enough that when the bucket was all the way dumped, the piston shaft hit the loader arms and now I'm sure they won't. Now I'm sure they won't. So you'll need to do the same thing, or I will rather, unless you're going to come here and do this for me. You need to do the same thing up here. But because the pistons I have coming were a one inch pin and the ones that I have here are an inch and an eighth pin, I've got to wait until I get the new pins in and of course the bushings in and then I'll have to do the exact same thing on the top forcing them to pivot in the hardened bushing in the piston where the grease is. After that this loader bucket should be good for another couple of decades of abuse. I doubt I will ever have to mess with it again. I mean it's, it's a band-aid yes but it's a good band-aid or a uh, long-term band-aid anyways. And then the loader should be back up and, and running, which is good with the dump truck down. So I'm pleased. It probably took longer to set up the welder than the welding did. All right, we'll come back to this again when all of my parts arrive. Now, it has been many, many moons since last we, well, not for you, but for me anyways, and uh, my parts have arrived. So these are the spring bushings. They're a hardened steel. You notice the teeth there. And they're designed to be driven into holes that maybe have egged out a little bit, have holes that are just a little oversized, and uh, they take up that slack and then give you another hard wear surface. So we have we have fixed we fixed the the pins up on the top. Bottom, this thing's upside down. We fixed the pins on the bottom when last we were together. It's been a while, I've kind of forgotten. And um, now it's time to put the pins, the bushings rather, in on these top bucket pins. And I don't really know how it's going to work. I'm going to try a hammer and see if I can drive them in. I don't know if you should be using a C clamp or something. But I got two sizes, rather, two lengths. I want to say mine are different somehow. Now I really feel like I'm missing something, but for life of me I can't figure out what it is. Huh, well, let's, let's just give it a try. It's kind of driving me crazy. I don't remember why I have so many different sizes. I don't have that many pins. Did I buy those to, to do the forks also? Maybe. All right, let's give it a shot. Well, nobody can say that didn't work slick. That's what it was. This web is slightly thinner than this one. So this fits nice and flush. This one sticks out. Let's go grab one of the new pistons.
Yeah, so I guess I don't... I don't know why I did that. Seems to work okay, though. All right. Backhoe pistons. This... This is what a Model 31 case loader piston looks like. It's... It's got the big long through bolts and rods and these are the ones where we couldn't find the seals although I, I do have a different book now and so I kinda think I probably be able to find the seals at this point but anyways these are the pistons I picked up from a surplus house Magister anyways they are Ukrainian or Romanian it's an Anian of some sort and they should be a direct bolt-in, a complete direct bolt-in. Everything should be fine. Uh, somehow their compressed length is slightly smaller than these and their extended length is slightly larger than these. So everything should fit okay. I do have to get them loose. The goal was to simply come out of these fittings into, uh, you know, just a, a 90 degree ORS fitting, the O-ring boss fitting. Just a 90 degrees and then I would use all my old crap. But that didn't happen. So I had to have new hoses made up. And they will uh, they should bolt in there nicely. I'm getting rid of these metal lines. Um, you know the point of a metal line is that it handles some abuse. These have already been smashed, although not by me. It's just, yeah, it's just time to get rid of them. Now I need to crack them all loose and get these things apart. Unfortunately, these clamps are breaking off. So that's kind of irritating. I might end up having to drill and tap. We'll see if I get that side off. My gut tells me no. I made up new pins. My pins aren't flashy or sexy, but they will nonetheless work. They'll go in there. Well, this actually is that end down there. They'll go in there and then they are bolted. That's important. If you're going to grease in the piston boss itself, your pin can't turn. If your pin turns, instead of all the pivoting happening where the grease is in this large wear surface, it happens in these two small wear surfaces and they go all egg shaped, which is what all of mine have done. Again, the idea behind these spring bushings is that they're expanded slightly so they can take up some wear and they, they kind of stick in the holes. The problem, of course, is that the ends of these are so badly damaged that even expanded, they aren't going to stick in the holes. The downside of that is everything's going to be sloppy again. you got a little well, this will end up pulling tight, but this is designed to, to sort of crush down. I, I really don't know what else to do. The proper fix, of course, would be to have a machine shop line bore these, press in new bushings, drill, that would then fit, these would then fit, drill out dessert fitting, and then put these in here. We're going to run on the same premise of when I fix the bucket. It's going to be so much better than it was. And it is definitely going to be good enough for this old girl. So those, fortunately, I can just slip in there. This one I have to hammer in. And yes, of course, a check-headed framing hammer is the proper tool for installing your bushings. I want to make sure that I can get grease to the center. Yes, I sure can. I mean, I could try tacking that so that it didn't move, but my gut feeling tells me that won't work. You know, before, this was just simply a, I don't know, a piece of muffler pipe or water pipe or something. And the, the slop going back and forth in the bucket was, was close to three quarters of an inch. This has got to help it. I've got to knock that down by more than half. So Now, this side here, I actually think, is in better shape because it still appears to have its bushing stops or there's just some weird wear in there. So 
So I had to go with two thinner ones because of the weird wear. Now, I told you it was a proper tool. Now I kind of wish that I'd gone with the bigger ones. Again, I'm using the, the smaller ones simply because that's that's what they had in there before, and so that's what the wear points are. It's got to be better. It's got to be better, and that's that's good enough for me. Okay, so the wrench sizes inch and a sixteenth and one inch. The reason that they're almost always two is because most people only have one set of big wrenches and if you needed two inch and a sixteenth you couldn't get it off. These have proven to be a little tight in the past. <clears throat> See my part of my problem is that the the swivel joint right here has frozen. So it's proven to be a little harder to get apart and I, I certainly can't twist the things in two because I kind of need them. Well, that sucks. Ah, twisting the whole pipe. Um, so I know this will come loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this loose and then I can spin this entire line And then if I can get it off up there, I believe I can take the hammer and gently tap the flare fittings backwards, right? Because they move forward and backwards. So if I gently tap it backwards, I should be able to, nothing else, get some oil on there and get it freed up. But it is going to puke on me, so I better get my cup. So these clips, I couldn't figure out why I had bought them. Well, I mean... Duh, they, there to go and, and uh, rebushing these holes here. Now these have never not had their fixed pins, so they're in pretty pristine shape, which means which means they're a nice tight fit. And we like that. pins those will work just fine All right. that's a problem and I don't want to hit it any harder I don't think I have a torch here. So we are going to be fine, even though I can't get them apart. This is the end right here that screws in up there. The inside two lines are um, the return side. So hydraulic oil on this side pushes the piston down. Hydraulic oil on that side pushes the piston back up. And these are the return lines, and they've got a secondary swivel right here. Again, I wasn't able to find this in one piece, so I have got an O-ring boss fitting, it's a number eight, to this flare here, which is, uh, I want to say a three-quarter, anyways, this is a 38 degree, 37 degree, and then this is a bigger flare. So I'm going to be able to screw this entire line in up there, 
and then put this in here. The only, the only downside is I'm going to lose my ability to adjust which way it points because that's, that's controlled by that fitting right there. I'm going to make one more attempt to free it up and then we're going to go with plan B. Well, I got it. <laughs> I've got this ancient old acetylene jeweler's torch, which must have come from my grandfather. I, either that or it was left here when I bought the place. And uh, it was hot enough to get the job done. I'm not saying that she's freed up like a wheelbarrow, but I just need to be able to adjust it so that it goes together instead of, yeah, so we'll, we'll let that cool. I'll clean out the inside of that fitting and we'll put it together. All right, now for the moment of truth. Let's fly this bad boy up in there. Hoses are going to fit just fine. All right. Would I want them on the inside? Nah, you pinch right there. Okay. It's nice. Here we go. I'm not even supposed to be doing this right now. I'm supposed to be mixing concrete. But somehow they were sold out of quickcrete, so I had to get Portland. So now I need to be able to load sand and gravel, and that means fixing this old girl. But that, that looks fine. That looks fine. So the end of the piston comes to right there. So yeah, they are slightly shorter, but have a slightly longer stroke length somehow. It's also a lot more slop up in there. But I can slip washers in that if I decide it's an issue. And I'm not sure it's an issue. Well, that should work. I don't, I don't care for the fittings being on the outsides of the piston. I thought about putting them on the inside, but if I put them on the inside, I can't see them. So I figured if I put them on the outside, maybe I'd be more careful with it. But, okay, let's go uh, fight the beastie off the other side, and we'll put that bucket on. <laughs> 